Yes, good afternoon and thank you very much for inviting me to participate in your activities over this next couple of days or former couple of days. Um, my topic area that I was assigned um, was to more or less talk about what we're doing as a county with sustainability and topics related to sustainability. And, and you know, I was just commenting earlier to one of your audience members here that uh, maybe nine years ago, I started to talk at the council about how we need to be paying attention to renewable energy, and particularly, even if it didn't make sense for anybody else in the world, it certainly makes sense for us because we are such an isolated group of islands, isolated in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Everything, or many, many things, uh, come to us from elsewhere. And our energy source has been, as you know, I've heard, you know, 97%, maybe that's reduced a little bit now, but 90, 97% at one time was our dependency on fossil fuel. And we had problems with that because of where we are by virtue of the fact that it comes from unstable countries mostly. Secondly, we could be subject to shipping strikes, which would totally mess us up. And third is that if there is an accident somewhere, on the ocean or near the port and you have a huge oil spill then we've got other problems so it only makes sense for us to be looking at renewable energy for the sake of protecting our environment and our political status and social status in the world and you know that the u.s ratings have gone down worldwide because of our involvement in some of these wars and as much as we would like to say they're related only to human rights it's not only related to human rights because there are other countries in the world who have similar um, civil rights issues that we're not involved in so the key to our involvement really is oil and we have to stop sticking our heads in the sand to say that that's not a reason that is a reason and for once or finally after all of these years we have sort of an alignment of all the planets and the stars where the federal government the state government the county government and the private sector are all looking at renewable energy as our savior and it is going to be our savior um, those of you who drive and have to buy gas know painfully well what's happened in the last you know year of how the, the oil has jumped or the price of gas has jumped just you know off the page practically you know I keep meticulous records about my travel um, driving and I used to figure out how many miles per gallon I was getting in my car and now I figure out how many cents per gallon of gas or per mile I get so I'm up to 14 cents a mile just on the gas alone with my vehicle. And earlier last year, I looked at my records from last year, I think I was paying seven cents per mile. So it's doubled in about a year. So this is, it's not gonna stop here. Anybody who thinks it is, you're you know, kind of a real wide-eyed optimist as has been said in some songs. So what are we doing at Maui County? One of the things that, that we're doing is we're working in partnership with the federal government, especially the Department of Energy of the federal government, and with the state government, both the legislature and with Mayor uh, Governor Lingle's uh, administration, trying to do and look for things that we can do together along with some of our private partnerships. I think one of the things that is exciting about renewable energy uh, for what's available here on Maui is that we have a lot of resources right here we don't have to go very far we have sun we have wind we have waves we have all kinds of things we have growing conditions that are unmatched in places like on the mainland that only have growing seasons our growing season is year-round so we have a lot of advantages over many many folks as to um, what the options are that will be viable for us as a community as a county as part of the state so we need to focus on that. And one of the interesting parts about focusing on this, um, what I call the energy buffet, all the choices that we have out there, is that there is room for a lot of entrepreneurs and smaller companies to actually get started and get a foothold in. We don't have to bring in a giant conglomerate from the mainland in order to show us what to do. Yes, we'll have to partner with some of those folks, but for a lot of the um, like solar installations, there are I think 12 or 13 companies now that are certified to do solar installations, where before there was only one. 
So there are businesses that have grown and developed or been initiated because of this demand. And we're going to see more and more of that as we go forward in our quest for sustainability in the energy sector. And before I leave the energy sector, let me just point out a couple things. Uh, some of you, I think, were at the Energy Expo last November that the County of Maui sponsored over in Wailea. <clears throat> Some faces look familiar. But out of that Energy Expo, which was really, really great, we got lots of um, rave reviews from actually federal people and also from private businesses that were not from this island that came to attend our Expo. And it was a great combination of students, community organizations, as well as utilities, other businesses related to renewable energy, and just businesses in general. Uh, it was a great uh, forum for people to talk about how they felt, what direction we should go in, what could they contribute. Um, it's nice to go to conferences and things like that, but if you don't have something that comes out of the conference afterwards, you're basically, you know, preaching to the choir, as they say. So the people that go to the energy conference are those already involved or interested in, yes, let's get going and do something for renewable energy. But you've got to do something else. You've got to reach the people and the businesses that aren't at the conference. So we have taken, um, and we always planned this from the beginning, and that's why we didn't call it an energy conference. We called it an energy expert. Expo, which was to expose people to what's going on now, what are the possibilities of what could go on here, and who are all the players? Who are the people that can help us? We can't do this by ourselves, and we realize that. So this was a great opportunity for us to bring all kinds of folks together, to get enthused, excited, and to form those networks that we need so desperately in order for us to move forward together. Out of that expo, and this is going to kick off next month, early May, there has been um, established five working groups. And the five working groups are made up of a core of people who were at the energy conference who expressed an interest in, interest in pursuing further some action plans, benchmarks, and timelines related to how we as a county are going to move forward in this area. And one of the working groups, I'll just go through, I won't read you everything, but I'll go through the, one of the working groups is on resource, renewable re resource development. And this is um, to look at what are all our options out there and how viable are those options. So let's do some in-depth work on looking at what we should do first. I mean, it's great to have a shotgun approach and just go do everything and everybody's running around excited about what they're involved in. But we should need to take a good look at what becomes more viable. In other words, setting up a priority of what we should pursue first. Um, there, with any of these renewable energy projects, there is always a huge upfront capitalization cost. Um, take the wind turbines, for example, that you folks visited. Um, that's a huge cost to put up by those turbines and, in, and install them. Then once they're up and installed, then you've got maintenance concerns, and all that happens before you even have the first kilowatt of power that goes into the grid. And that's another story, because you've got to have um, purchase of power agreements, or PPAs as they call them, uh, with the utility so that you can get into their grids, or, or, or how you get into it. So it's a very, very long process. Um, last night I was at a, at a meeting for um, Shell Oil Company, or Shell, they don't call themselves an oil company anymore. Shell Company is also pursuing, uh, starting very, right now, they're starting to look at, um, they're in the process of putting wind turbines in the Ulupalakua area. So Ulupalakua Ranch is their partner for that wind turbine um, project, wind farm project. So this was their second meeting with the community. They had gone back, done their archeological studies, they have done their um, flora and fauna studies, and made a report back to the community. And they're continuing to follow in this process to make sure that things are done correctly, that all of the impacts can either be negated or mitigated um, throughout their process. But their, their wind farm will also bring some other uh, power alternatives to us. 